Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Uh, welcome uh, to this super Saturday, early Saturday. Everybody get a lot of rain yesterday or this week? Oh my gosh. So, yes. heard it's supposed to be beautiful and sunny today. I hope so. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Again, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Keith Scott. I'm your trainer and facilitator, facilitator for today. I recognize a lot of faces. How many ha have not attended one of my classes before? Oh, a little bit less than, than half. Okay, I'll just do a brief introduction of myself, and we don't have time to do an introduction for everyone, but I would like to get a little bit of information about my audience today. Again, my name is Keith Scott. I'm from the Dallas McKinney area, and I'm a human resource consultant, trainer, and I'm part of a, my company's called KS Consulting Group, and we provide a lot of trainings uh, throughout the state of Texas. Um, I've been doing this for, in my career professional, for about over 20 years. I won't say how much over 20 years, because I might age myself. <laughs> uh, but uh, specifically, though, for, for child care centers um, with workforce solutions across the state of Texas, I've been doing this for about five or six years. Um, I offer a variety of different soft skill training, um, obviously in leadership, uh, human resources, which is something you may attend later on today, team building, customer service, et, et cetera. And I've been working uh, with this workforce uh, solutions for about three or four years. So that's enough information about myself. So let me get to know the audience a little bit. Um, how many of you in the audience are directors? Okay. How many of you are maybe directors and owners? How many of you owners? Okay. How many of you provide the most, one of the most important roles is to direct care uh, for the children or teachers? Okay. All right. Okay. And did I miss anyone else? Did I miss? And sometimes someone probably does it all. What's your role? You head of school. Okay. So I think I covered all, all, all the bases. Okay. And how many of you would consider yourself a leader? Half the group, hope, maybe hopefully some say, okay, hopefully. So when, when you say hopefully, I mean, how would you consider yourself a good leader? <laughs> oh, I'm, somebody raised both hands. Okay, all right, I can sit down and let you teach the class, right? <laughs> she said yes, okay, let's change. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, I'd like to get started today, and bear with me, I want to read this to you because it's very important. I, I, I just want you to get this before I actually go into the entire presentation. I'll give you the handouts uh, very, very soon. Imagine a workplace where everyone chooses to bring energy, passion, positive attitude with them every day to work. You can't lead a great organization of any size without getting your people aligned, okay, enthusiastic, focused, relentless on the mission of what you're trying to do for your child care center. But how do you do that? How do you make big things happen? And how do you get employees on your side? No skill in business is more important. So how do you get there? I know as you as if you're a child care director, administrator, or any kind of role you may play within the child care center, it's very important. So you're managing a child care center is a big job. Uh, it takes someone who loves children, obviously, understand people, can handle the business side of the child care center, to offer high quality programs for children and families, sometimes family that has insufficient funds, and the family sometimes hard to pay, unable to pay, okay, to meet all the state requirements and the licensings and accreditations and compliances, that can be tough, right? Uh, and only being able to pay employees eight to ten dollars an hour, you know, that can be kind of tough. And how do you get people to get motivated and lead in that kind of aspect? You got to hire people, you got to develop people, you got to train people, you got to deal with turnover, uh, you got sometimes if you're a director, you got to be a, a leader, an accountant, a manager, a cook, a teacher, shoulder to cry on, a rock to depend on, the list can go on and on and on. A lot of times you wear a lot of many hats, right? It can be very a challenging and daunting task. I read a story, um, and I find it kind of amusing, how a child care consultant went to visit a child care center and found a child care co-worker standing behind the, her center's director. She was rubbing her shoulders and offering her reminders to breathe in deeply <laughs> as the director was facing the computer doing some work. Uh, this scene was soon followed by a continuous ringing on the phone, someone's calling all the time, teacher yelling for help with the child, had just vomited and got sick. Then a parent came in with tears with the news of just being downsized. Can any of you relate to this? <laughs> that's, that's a daunting task, right? With all the time spent on managing teaching, compliance paperwork, putting out fly, uh, fires, how much time do you have to be a great leader? It can be very tough, okay? So with that being said, 
so many things you can do as, as, as a leader. And the first exercise I want to give you is we're going to start off immediately in the exercise. So you can work in your groups in, which, in your table, but define what is a leader? What, what do you think makes a leader? What's your definition of leader and what makes a great leader? So I'm going to give you a quick five minute exercise. Okay, and hopefully you got some writing paper. For, I would give you this right now, but I don't want you to cheat and get one of my definitions. <laughs> but, um, or you can just talk amongst yourself. Just five minutes, what, give me a definition of a leader and what makes a great leader? So I'm going to see how each of you, the groups, uh, done. Since this table knows, got great leaders over here. I'm going I'm to start with this. I, we put someone who is knowledgeable about whatever business. Knowledgeable about um, the business? Understanding and compassionate. Okay. Employees trust you to lead. Okay. Um, able to wear a lot of hats. Enthusiastic and passionate. Thick skin. Mm -hmm. uh, have the ability to delegate. Mm -hmm. Have a good team behind you and the ability to listen. Okay, great, great. A lot of those things we're going to talk about those. That's great. What about this group here? You have anything different or some things you wanted to say? Being able to respect people and make those tough decisions and uh, mediate mm -hmm. between thing, issues that might be happening between okay. other work co-workers okay. and stuff okay. like that. And being able to respect people and, and mediate and, and lead. It's great. What about this group right here? Um, leader has to be professional, um, a visionary, uh, people person, Problem solver, multitasker, knowledgeable in your field. Okay. It's a lot. No, it's a lot. It's a lot. It could be like this. It could be the, and, and visionary though. I like to work the visionary. Yeah, we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk. Say the whole. Yeah, right. And problem solving, shooting, and, and this and dealing with people and managing people. Yeah. What about the group in the back? We have um, non-judgmental. -judge work with all kinds of people. Fair. Good communication skills. Goal oriented. Organized. Mm. Dependable. Mm. Um, willing to help, handle stress and difficult situations in a po positive man manner, learn to stand your ground. Wow, and I heard that a couple times, stand your ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot of stuff. That's, a, that's almost every word in the dictionary. <laughs> 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 and communication is a big skill. That's, that's, a, that's very important. What about this group here in the back? We have been a role model, being role model. Strong, strong, flexible, how to talk to people. Mm. Um, you know, you talk to different people. You got to talk to a kid one way. You talk to the mm -hmm. coworker another way. And like you said, then you talk to a parent the other way. Right. How to talk to people? Be, being flexible. Be right. Flexible. Right. Great. What about this group here? Um, similar. Um, we put knowledgeable. Um, they uh, I put knowing what works, what doesn't work, what to have, you know hold on to listener, mm -hmm. and then be confidential. Like okay. if someone goes and talks. To okay. Them. Confidential. Right. Dependable, yeah. approachable, mm -hmm. um, organized, planning. Um, bold, like hold your people accountable, mm -hmm. multitasker, flexible, compassionate, understanding, mm -hmm. and then I just put, um, just have good values as a person. Mm -hmm. as good a values as a person, right. I heard sometimes where you got to be tough on one hand and accountable, but compassionate on the other hand, and trying to find that mix can be, can be a challenge. And last but not least. They um, always have an open door policy, uh, support for staff, good advocate, good attitude, prayer warrior in our case. <laughs> um, and I think somebody said able to show empathy when needed and not in it for the money. Right. And not in it and for the money sometimes. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we can't talk about these corporate um, Fortune 5 100 companies, huh? I, I think they're you sure they're, I think they're in it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> right? We, we know when you're in a service industry, you're really not in it for the money. And so really, well, sometimes they call it being a servant leader. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another subject or topic. There's a lot of books. I mean, there's hundreds of books, thousands of books on, on leadership. And so, but I want to try to make it relatively simple for you uh, for today. So basically, everything you said is 100% correct. And the list can go on and on and on. And you have to wear those many different hats. But also, you got to see what matches with your personality and your style, too, right? Because everybody can manage and lead a little bit differently. But a simple definition is a person influences. You have to influence someone, and you have to influence a group of people towards an achievement of a goal. So it says um, goal, motivate. And so that's the simplest definition as you can probably get, OK? The White Eisenhower described leadership as the art, it's not a science, the art of getting someone to do something 
you want done because he or she wants to do it. <laughs> Isn't that tough? Psychology. psychology I mean, leadership, leadership is a lot of psychology uh -huh. and motivation and influencing. So we're going to come back to this later, um, it's this exercise. What is it that you want your people to do at your child care center and where do you want them to, to lead them? But a good leader, though, has to be goal oriented. I heard that mentioned before and visionary and things like that. And so we're going to come back with goals and vision uh, towards the middle or the end of the session and see what that is for your child care center. But a good leader has to be goal oriented. Otherwise, you might end up just leading people around in circles. You want to lead them to the right place and where you want to go. OK. Now, I heard a lot of terms mentioned with task and what you're trying to do uh, with, with people. OK. Now, with that, there's a leader or leadership and there's a manager and management, okay? Is there a difference? What, what, what's the difference? What's the difference between a leader and a manager? Anybody, anybody have a guess? What's the difference between a leader and a manager? What would a manager do that may be different than what a leader might do? Sometimes it can be bridged the same, but what would be a little bit different Mm -hmm. Wow, like example and a role model, right? Right? And I think I heard someone says before, even when we said influence or motivate, I mean, you could, in the right way, I think a, doesn't the leader can do that more than, you know, this, you have to do this, this is your task and job. Why do we say this? Because he or she wants to do it. Well, the leader sets like the overall goal, mm -hmm. and then the manager has to figure out how to delegate that. Okay. And how, how to delegate it, right, okay. And you can serve in both roles, I and mean, you do, okay? All right, well, let me just give you a little example, the, the main difference between a manager and a leader, okay? The biggest difference is the way you motivate, okay? The people who work for you or follow them. Leaders lead people, managers manage tasks. And so, take a look at this as a distinction between the two, a leadership versus management. Leaders look at change trying to improve things in different. Typically, a manager's gonna go with stability. This is a task at hand and this is what we need to do, okay? Not saying either one is wrong, but you have to do both. But a leader, as we said, is gonna lead people. A manager is gonna manage work or task. A leader has followers. A manager has subordinates, people underneath them, okay? A leader can take long, what thinks long-term or visionary and a manager short term. Let's get the task done. That's what we have to do today or maybe even tomorrow or whatnot or this week. Again, we talked about vision for a leader, objectives, okay? I know we're playing on words and, and connotation, but vision is more longer term. Where are, the, where, where are we? Where are we trying to go? We're gonna talk about vision a little bit later. A uh, leader is self-directed. People are empowered to do things, but a manager kind of has to plan the details, okay? Again, both of them are important, Again, a leader facilitates and a manager makes you do something. A leader typically can have a personal char characteristic or charisma as, a, you know, as opposed to authority with the manager. Not saying a manager doesn't have heart, but you kind of lead from the heart and the manager more so lead from your head. Okay, passion, control, shapes and acts. You see some other terms. Being proactive from a leadership instead of being reactive from a manager. And I think I kind of heard it sort of in the back but said a different way. Uh, a leader can actually sell, you know, what you're trying to do. Not as a hardcore, crazy salesperson, but they sell it because they believe they sell their person what they're trying to do as opposed to telling someone what to do. And the last one I don't have on the list is that a leader is kind of more like transformational. Like we look at change and really trying to look at really the future and transformational, really making a difference as opposed to a manager can sometimes be more like transactional, what you have to do. That makes sense? And think about this question, and it's in your first page of your handout, okay, because I'm going to give you 10 minutes on this exercise, okay? What is it that you want your people to do at your child care center? What is it that you really want them to do? Or think of it as another way. Where do you want to lead them? Where, what is it that you want your people to do at your child care center? And where do, you, where, where do you want to lead them? So if you look at this exercise that we're not going to actually focus on in this handout, it goes a little bit more in depth and it gets your questions or your thought process a little bit more as you say, as you think about what do you want your people to do at your child care center, where do you want to lead them? Think big. 
things that can significantly change and improve and grow your child care center. Not just the day to day, you have to think about the future and where you want to go, what you want to be. So think of it in that terms, as opposed to just the, unless there's some problems and some tasks that you really need to do and it's not happening, you know, like you got some turnover issues and some simple things that people aren't doing. Those things are important too, but also think big. So again, discuss it amongst your, your group, or if you want to turn around, or larger groups if you want. I'm going to give you about seven minutes or so to work on that, and then I want to get your feedback on that. If you really look at this particular part of the exercise, it really does challenge you, and it really challenges your thinking. And I know you can read, but I just when it says, what is it that you want your people to do at your child care center? Where do you want to lead them? Think of big things that can significantly change and improve and grow your child care center. What is the big goal or the stretch goal? Something that you haven't done before. It's not just status quo. Great leaders are challenged. Okay, if you ever heard of the book From Good to Great by Jim Collins, I recommend that book. You can pick it up at the library for free. But he really talks about how good companies or you know, average co companies end up becoming average and mediocre because they stick with the status quo. Or you know, everything's going okay so far. And so you can't stay where you're at sometimes. You have to always be innovative and be creative because things change, right? And so just challenge yourself to do that. But also the second part, which we didn't do this exercise, but you have to really understand, and someone said relationship and get to know your people and what perceptions and habits and how are you actually going to get them to follow you, okay? We're very concerned about our, our, our customers, right? And we do customer surveys and we're concerned about our children and the parents, but how much do we really know our employees? and what happens and how we're going to get them on our side. And so that's just an example in detail what this exercise would do. And so I recommend that you spend a little more time when you go back to your child care center and think about that. But based on the simple version, I'll go around. What is it that you want your people to do at your child care center? Or where do you want to lead them? Ms. Gregor. Okay. Our main goal is to increase our enrollment. Okay. We're a private school. Mm -hmm. We're not really a daycare. Okay. But um, we have an elementary side and a the pre-K toddler side okay. of the school. So we've been trying to increase enrollment for years. Okay. So we want to gain a reputation. You want to gain a reputation, an, right? An exemplary private school. Mm -hmm. And that's a business aspect yeah. of it, but you got to have your you employees have on board though, young right? Parents right. To, and right. you know, people look on the, right. that's where they go now. Right, right. And we know that, so that's one of our goals. Yeah, the, the social media aspect of it right. and, and getting that type of generation there to lead them to come because that's what's really is coming right yeah, now so that is. that is a change yeah. and so that's why we can't stay where we're at this group right here next what, what do you have uh, where do you want your people to go how do you want to lead them um, I think for me because um, we are a preschool and daycare so okay. extended mm -hmm. um, we want the attitude of our parents and our and our community to look at us as professionals and mm. not as babysitters mm -hmm. and so a big part of mine that I talk to my staff is um, to be a professional. professional. Think of yourself as a professional mm -hmm. and if you, you're the one with the knowledge of those children and what you're accomplishing. Mm -hmm. You may have a parent that comes in as um, an attorney, a doctor, a mm -hmm. highly educated mm -hmm. But they're not the professional in your, you know, you're the professional. Right, right, right. you're so the expert. But you have to take on that role and act a professional. And if you do, then uh, they're going to they're going to have that respect mm -hmm. to, and look to you for answers <coughs> as a professional. Right. That changes the quality of your center. It, it it changes the whole dynamics if your staff will, you know, take on that role no. in their dress, in their actions, in their actions. Right, right. That, that, that's great. And the thing I like about that also, you can be 18, 20, 21. It doesn't make a difference. You still could be a professional. If I came to you as a parent, I was looking for your expertise and your professionalism because you're there with my child for eight hours or seven hours or whatnot. And so I rely, depend on that. So that's great. Real quick, in the back over there, what do you, what do you have? Mm -hmm. and know that what they're doing is important and that everything they're doing with these children early on is going to set the tone for what type of person they grow up to be. So right. we want them to know the importance right. of what they're bringing to the children and how they're instilling them and changing them and helping them grow and develop into young adults and, and 
Yep, that, that's great. That's great. And I hear some things as we get ready to go into the next session. We talk about HR and the staffing and the type of people that you get involved. That's very important. Right? Education and training and development and professional development is, is good because you're growing them also. So that's great. Uh, in the back over here, what do you have? In the middle. Um, hey, myself, I wanted just a strong reputation in our community because um, we've had in the past our reputation mm -hmm. has kind of fluctuated because uh -huh. so just getting us back in the public eye okay. for a good reputable strong reputation and leadership in the community. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that transcends and not just within the child care center because you want your community to respect you in, in that aspect. This group right here. Uh, our first one was professionalism and she basically worded everything. Okay. Okay. So great. said it really well. I said, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> not, not as good as I did. Um, in education, we, we would like them, because um, we're always taking online classes and we're trying to lead by example, that mm -hmm. can always, you know, not leave us hopefully, but um, uh, encourage them to better their um, what am I trying skills. To say? Their, skills, right. their aspects and, and, and get that education so they do feel professional. Well, mm -hmm. I have a CDA now and they feel better about themselves mm -hmm. so they, they that vibe will go to someone else and new people coming in will see that we are not just a daycare, we're trying to you know, set the goal higher in, in, the, you know, okay. in the industry. Oh, great, great. Thank you. This group right here, what do you have? Um, well, it's, we're not really the, we, we're not owners or, you know, or the whatever but one thing I, I love about our school is that our um our director is always like she sits down with us and she wants to, to uh you know she lines out a professional goal mm -hmm. for us for the for mm -hmm. the year and she does everything in her power to get us there you know mm -hmm. as far mm -hmm. as training mm -hmm. or any classes we're interested in taking and that kind of thing so okay. and she wants her as to always be like you know mm -hmm. striving for something better within ourselves and okay. within what can we provide for our children and right. for our parents right. and right. Let me, like let me put a caveat on what she said. I actually, it was a good point. I would have forgotten unless you mentioned it. <laughs> is that you don't have to be a manager, supervisor, boss, or director to be a leader. Mm -hmm. You're a leader in your classroom. You lead by example in what you do. And actually, you can be an example and sometimes, you know, help your manager, supervisor, director, or owner in leading by in what you do. Mm -hmm. And so, it, I mean, my children can be leaders, as we said before, young people. And even the children within the class can show leadership amongst other children. And so it's, leadership is across the board, okay? So yeah, I'm pretty sure you ladies are leaders, what you do. So this group right here, what do you have? Um, well, the first thing we have is that we are faith-based, and so we want the teachers to, in all areas of their mm -hmm. life, to walk the, mm -hmm. the walk, you know? Um, but secondly, we want them to be excited. We want them to be as excited to be there as we are every day. Mm -hmm and look for new and exciting ways mm. to teach and to just explore. No, it doesn't always have to be a handout, paper, mm. to color, or whatever. Right. There's so many things. And so really to take it on themselves to really make their class exciting. Yeah, to be innovative and creative yeah. and use their strengths and gifts and talents. So we're going to come back and talk about those things. So great. Um, let me just give you a couple of quotes. I'm not going to give you too many quotes for today, but a leader is one who is willing to roll up their sleeves and get into the trenches and do what it takes to teach others and to show others how to get the job done. I've heard this mentioned. I've heard a few ladies say this also. A good leader is someone who manages to let people under them excel. Okay? They're able to bring out the best in other people, in those people. So, just a, some quick research themes uh, in reference to leadership. It, it kind of focuses on um, building connection with others purposeful establishment of relationships, identifying with followers, motivating others, sharing uh, meaning, integrity, and responsibility. So if you really look at this, when there was research done in, this, in child care center, it's really based on interpersonal characteristics that you may have. And it's also based on relationships. And so you, you got to have that characteristic of the interpersonal and people kind of, people say people oriented, and being able to have a relationship with people. People have relationships, have to like you. And you have to like them, okay? Um, if you look at some of the qualities people admire in a leader, the biggest part, they say, is honesty. You have to have some integrity. But you also have to be like a visionary and forward thinking. Not just where we're going to be, where are we going? And how can I get you there to follow? I heard this in the beginning. Someone said knowledgeable. You still have to know your stuff. You have to be competent. You don't have to be an expert and perfect and say, I have all the answers, because no one has all the answers. But the third one is that you have to be uh, competent, but you also have to be inspiring. 
okay? Because we can't always directly motivate someone in this sense, because some part of it has to come inside, but you can be a little bit more inspirational. Does that make sense? But studies have shown, and I've worked, my, my, my career has been 25 years or so. I've been in corporate America, small companies, large companies across the board in human resources. I've seen, I've seen it all. I've seen the good and bad and ugly. People come to me all the time, employees, about the challenges and the issues that they have in their job. And it's tough. A lot of people don't like their jobs. They don't like the work that they do. That's another issue with hiring the right people that like what they're doing. And we'll talk about that if you're going to attend the HR session. But studies have shown that only 30% of employees are engaged and inspired at work. 30%. That's across the board. Hopefully that's not where you're at, but you don't want your child care center to be like that. About 52% of employees are present. They show up, but they're not engaged. I call it butts in seats. I just show up. I go to work every day, be on time and all that stuff. But what are you doing while you're there? What impact are you making? Okay. A full 18% are actively disengaged or worse. They don't do care, don't really, don't do too much of nothing. And last one, it says organizations across the United States, they say you lose about 50, uh, $550 billion in productivity because the people are disengaged and not doing what they're supposed to do. And can you imagine that? Having people work for you like that? That's not good. So as a leader, obviously there's decisions you need to make in hiring the right type of people. Well, while they're there, you got to hopefully motivate them and get them engaged. So let's talk about you. In a sense, it starts, in, it's, it's a mind thing. I say get your mind uh, set right in perspective, okay? Before you become an effective leader, you must think like a great one. And these are just some caveats and some things that can get you to think like a great leader. Okay, well, if you say the state of the economy has been bad or things aren't great, it, it has improved, you know, but you can look at both sides and say, yeah, it's not perfect, it's not this or this or that, complain or whatnot, or whether it's your, you know, whether right wing, left wing, or whatever party you belong to. But it's, it's your way of thinking. Is the cup half empty or half full? So a great leader typically is very optimistic. There's always room to grow and improve and be better me versus I don't change. Leaders don't think, don't, great leaders don't think like that. I'm good enough or just as I am. We all can improve, okay? Some people may have the philosophy of saying give people an inch and they'll take a mile. That's not a good philosophy to have with your people versus believe in people and they'll believe in you in return. So that's building relationships. Treat people the way you want to be treated versus treat people the way they want to be treated. And so I know the golden rule does apply. The golden rule says, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. But a better philosophy is treat people the way they want to be treated because they may not be, want to be treated the same way as you, okay? So instead of saying, I can try versus that we can do this. That's a leadership mindset. As a leader, I know the most versus there's always more to learn and everyone I meet knows something that I don't. Everybody can contribute. I'll share a story with you. And actually, I got this a while back, a few years um, from, well, I was at church with one of my pastors, but he, he shared this story with me. Uh, there was a college female freshman student. She sent a letter to her parents saying, dear mom and dad, I met a guy in college and I think I love him. That's kind of scary for me because I got an 18 year old getting ready to graduate and get ready to go to college. So that kind of resonates with me a little bit. And then she goes on to say he was previously married and has kids. And she's a freshman. I'm going to move in with him and I'm pregnant and we're going to get married. What? That, whew, I don't have any hair right now and I rub my hair when I get tense and stressed and things like that, right? But can you imagine that the parents were devastated? Can how they can be devastated? Okay, so this is what she said in the letter. But she also said, however, in the letter, the daughter said, turn to the back of the page of the letter. She said, nothing on the first page on this letter is true. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, but I made a C minus in biology. And I spent all my tuition money and I need more money. I said, well, no problem. Okay, here's some more money. But it's a mind perspective. We can think something can be bad when it's not as bad, but you know, it's just something to think about. So all is not bad perspectives all the time. So when you look at these things, don't just think stuff it could be negative. So think positive and you never you never know what may happen. So So let me share with you just a little grid. You don't have this in your, your handout, but it's called the four factors, and it's a simple model that talks about leadership, of effective leadership. 
and what you need to have in simple terms. Factor one is, is, is influence. You need to be influenced. You have to influence people. But where does, so, so this is the outside factor. You influencing people. The inner side factor is for you as a person. So we're talking about you. And how are you going to influence people? You have to have self-discipline. What do you influence people about? Where are you trying to lead them? So you have to be disciplined and organized who you are, where you are, where you want to go, or where you want your child care center to go, or even with your children. What are you trying to do? Are you disciplined? Where are you trying to lead them? So that's something you have to do inside before you can do this outside. Okay? And the second factor is integrity. As a leader, you have to have integrity. Okay? And integrity is basically trust. Okay, but you have credibility, you say you're going to do what you're going to do, but also part of it is that you know your job, what you're going to do, and so that's where the credibility part stands at. Okay, and the third factor is a little bit different than the fourth, but you have to be inspirational. Inspirational, motivational, what you have. But part of that is what's the vision that we have? But is it a shared vision that we all can buy into? And towards the end, we're going to talk a little bit about vision. We're going to have a lot of time to work on the exercise, but what's your vision? What's your shared vision? But again, we always talk for leadership, everything also starts with the inside, with me. But what's my personal mission and vision? But does it actually translate to the shared vision that we want for this child care center and overall for, on the outside factor? And then, it's, it's a, then the next thing with your people as an effective leader, it's about growth and development, right? If you want to treat, treat people like to help with professional development or training and other things, you have to give them that access and opportunity for improvement. So factor number four is improvement. And you do want to develop others. You always, continuous learning is very important. So you want to develop others, but where do you think all this stuff has to start? It's not being selfish. These things start with you. So you have to be willing for personal growth and development. So you have, must know your weak spots and your strong uh, parts. And so even as I go back, I'm going to cheat a little bit and go back to um, this part. <laughs> this is something to think about. Are you more of a manager or are you more of a leader? But think about those things and think about the areas that you might need to grow because that's going to help you and your staff. But it starts inside first before you can become a, a better leader. So, but we say be the best that you, uh, you can be. We're not telling you to be change or different personality unless someone is really a bad person. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, we're all individuals, okay, and we're different. But we say be yourself. But we challenge you, do you really know yourself? That's why I encourage people to do a lot of assessments. You can go online doing assessments about your personality, or you can do Meyer Briggs, and there's just so many that you can do. Or you can even ask other people. So you can identify your strengths and your development areas or weaknesses. But, but challenge yourself. But be yourself. We're not saying to overhaul massive change. Know yourself. Know what you need to work on. But you have to start with yourself before you can help or lead others. First, we say lead yourself for growth, OK? So first of all, be authentic. We're not telling you to be a fake or someone else. Be the best person that you can be. We're all different. We got different personalities and style, but we can still get the work done. And we can still have people follow us and influence us, and we can inspire them, right? So be yourself means letting your weaknesses also show to. You don't have to always hide or be defensive about certain things. If you need help, if you have other people on your team empowered to help you out, allow that to happen. It does not mean take it or leave it. It's not if you want people to follow you, okay? Instead, you have to figure out how to, uh, how to be you in a way that broadens your approval and impact versus turning people off, okay? Part of what is hard about being yourself is that we don't always know exactly who we are. That's why I talked earlier about the self-awareness. Self-assessment is very important. It's very important for every great leader to know who they are and where they've been, okay? Again, we talked about utilizing the self-awareness tools and resources. But some ways to be yourself. Some ways to help you be yourself no matter where you are in your career. Have conviction. We talked about credibility and knowledge. Know your stuff. <coughs> and if you don't know certain things, try to learn it. And I'm not saying you have to know everything, but know your stuff. Know your environment. Know your people. Go in the classroom. Observe the difference in the diversity. Know the parents. Know the children. You know, obviously know your teachers and people that are working for you. Again, build self-awareness. Again, we said open and honesty is very important about uh, what you don't know. Be open and honest about that, okay? Use positive self-talk and positive thought or affirmations. Again, it's not always looking at the negative side of the picture, okay? Think of the cup as, again as half full and encourage that with your, with your staff. 
And this is where when I say when I went back to the first exercise, too much of, our, of us are so comfortable in where things are, or we're scared and we have fear. And you know, we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. So we have to stretch like a rubber band. We have to get out of our comfort zone to do things different. If you want change and you want things to improve, or if you want to remain the same or status quo, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Every now and then, I'm not saying big thing, every, just take on something a little bit different this week that you didn't do last week and build upon that. You'll be amazed what the change you can probably have within six months or a year. So I would challenge everyone that, with that, but I would also have you challenge your people. But you can do that by leading by example as a group. Okay, so how do you help others to believe in themselves? You gotta help others believe in themselves, okay? And so you need to believe in all people, okay? Provide individual development plans, okay? Do you, everyone does, I know there's another class going on, I think about performance evaluations, or maybe they've done it before. I, I don't know if anybody took a performance evaluation class um, at the center. But in performance evaluations, you know, it's not just, you know, what you did well on, you know, what you may, you know, didn't do well on, but it's also about growth. So individual development plans is about growth. What can, how can I grow? How can I help my person grow, okay? And so, but let them utilize their strengths. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about strengths a little bit, because we said this earlier. We want people to really work more in their strength and their talents, as opposed to always working on developing things and growing things in their weakness. That might be the, not the best thing for them to do. They may need to be in another part of an uh, area where they take care of maybe a, a toddler as opposed to infants, because their strengths are better working with a toddler. But you also need to create a safe haven, okay? Openly seek knowledge and perspective from others, and we talked about that. So let me share with you another story. I guess I like stories. Believe it or not. Like actually, I know when I, when I go to church sometimes, when I'm promoting it, you know, uh, well, that's just me personally. I, I hear stories, and then I go back and say, I can use this in some of my training. Okay, so my pastor had shared this one time also. He said, and this is, all these are kind of true stories. A while back, Jim Burke, who was a product manager at Johnson & Johnson, so you know who Johnson & Johnson is and all the baby stuff that they make. Uh, he failed miserably on a new product launch. So he was launching some new product, I don't know what it was, at Johnson & Johnson. And, that, and it was, they invested a lot of money, a lot, multi-millions of dollars in this product. It wasn't very successful, okay? But he expected to be fired, okay? So he had a meeting, or the chairman of Johnson & Johnson um, asked to see him, Mr. Burke. And so uh, he asked Burke, are you the, so Mr. Burke, again, thinking he was going to be fired, the chairman is asking to see him. So the chairman said, Mr. Burke, are you the one that failed on this product launch? Mr. Burke said, yes. Again, and he expected to be fired, okay? Okay, this chairman said that he wanted to congratulate Mr. Burke. How can you congratulate for someone for failing, okay? He stated, if you're not making mistakes, you are not doing anything or taking risks. Sometimes you're not going to always get it right, but you have to be out there and get out of your comfort zone, take some risks. You know, me being an entrepreneur, what are you doing? Are you leading a center? Are you trying to make a change? Are you trying to do something different? There's been a lot of businesses. When you look at these big corporations and multi-billion dollar companies, when they launch new products and cars, do you know how many failures that they have? Things that aren't successful or new products for, for people to eat or whatever? But you keep going at it and trying until you get it right? And so, but obviously he must have had a good track record in the past. It wasn't just one thing that, that derailed him at this particular launch. Again, he said, it, again, the chairman said, he stated that if you're not making mistakes, you're not uh, take, doing anything or taking risks. But long story short, I kind of conclude this story. This gentleman later ended up becoming, the guy with the product fell, launch, ended up becoming the CEO of the company. One of the best CEOs that they ever had. And so, Encourage your employees to, to take some risks. You need to take some risks, but support them because everyone's not going to always get it right. That's how things improve. Make sense? So grow yourself. Be an avid learner. Life is still about continuous learning and development. It just doesn't stop. I don't care if you're 60 or 70. Um, I mean, even my mom, she could probably use the phone better than I can, but at least I'm glad she was able to use it. She got an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone. And so things, but it's always about continuous learning and growing, okay? Seek and build know-how. So continue to, you know, know your, your profession, uh, what's going to be um, very beneficial for you. But continuous ongoing life learning, we said that is very important, but it's for yourself, but obviously also very important for your employees.
So sometimes you got to get to know your employee and ask them. Okay, and I do that in another class about really getting to knowing your employees and motivating your employees. But how do you do that with, um, with your team? How do you unleash the power of your people? Leaders aren't born, okay? There's, a, there's some myths about leadership. Leaders are born, leaders aren't born, leaders are made, and leadership is a privilege, okay? So when given a choice, all people have an inherent desire to do the right things, okay? To contribute and to make a positive difference uh, through the work that they do, okay? But it also goes along with making the right selection too. But what happens when you put your faith in people? They do things even they didn't know that they could do, okay? They become more interested in their work and they rise to the occasion. So how do you establish trust with your team? Know that people want to contribute, and most people do, okay? So how can you work for someone who doesn't trust you or doesn't respect you? I think someone else said before, <laughs> respect is very important. I know it's mutual, uh, but I never trusted someone who didn't trust me. It's kind of hard. And this back, and I, if you've attended some of my other classes before, people work for people sometimes and for good managing supervisors. Studies have shown that one of the most important reasons, re reasons why people sometimes leave companies and organizations is because of who they work for. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a total witness of that. I left three organizations, um, or unfortunately I got downsized because of a, a, a three, but I know two of them I left because I had a terrible boss and manager and supervisor. So, you know, that happens. And so what kind of manager and supervisor, what kind of leader are you? So I challenge you, I'm pretty sure most of you are, but you can always take it to another level. But you have to also demonstrate that everyone counts. You can't put everyone in the same boat. Diversity is very important. It's not just diversity because we're, you know, um, you know, all, you know, um, got different rates, you know, ages and things like that, but personality and style, background, you know, beliefs or values or religion, it, it comes the gambit. Okay, even if my, my brother and I, you can say, oh, we're the same, but we're so different. That's diversity. And so, but you have to treat people as individuals. Yeah, there's a plan that you have to do overall for the organization, but demonstrate that everyone counts. The more they know, the more they care. So someone said communication in the beginning. That's a big part of, um, of being a leader. You can never over communicate in various forms of communication and find out how people like to communicate. But communication is very, very, very important. The more they know, the more they care. Ask questions that promote insight. What would you do if you had my job? We're going to do an exercise at the end that's going to really challenge you also, you know, that what would you do if someone else had your job? What would, I mean, what would they do? Okay. Take responsive action. Once you find out what people think, you've got to uh, act on that and show that you've taken them into account. And so how many of you do employee surveys? Okay. And how many, let me back up, how many of you do customer surveys? Parent surveys? Okay, I encourage you to do both. Typically what I find is that obviously we care about our customers and what they think. They pay the bills and all those things. But really our, our employees, and I know it's lip service a lot of people said, says, but our employees are our best asset. Not necessarily, because if without the right staff, you won't have any, any customers or parents or children, okay? But it's very, it is very important for you to do customer uh, satisfaction surveys with your parents or with, with others that are stakeholders. But it's also just as important or sometimes more important to do that with your employees. So show them, you know, that you care. What do they think? You need to ask them. And I've, I've done surveys before, and I may have an example of uh, some I may have brought with me, and I know I reserve that for the next class. But ask them. Get feedback and see if they're satisfied or engaged. And then you can actually, I've done that where I went out to child care centers because they wanted to be anonymous because they felt that there was some tension or some issues with their child care workers. And it was with the leader. The leader was bold enough, the child care director said, Keith, I want you to come out and do this survey because um, I think we may have some issues and challenges and it, it may be, be, may be m because of me as a, as a leader. And so, and it wasn't as bad as she thought it was, but there was a few things. So are you willing to do that as a leader? to ask your employees what they think. But not only that, really what I was gonna get at is when you ask them what they think, uh, take then take action. I should be in organizations and big companies, we do surveys on employees and we find out some challenging issues, but we don't do anything about it. We don't share with them as a whole 
as an aggregate, what we what came up as some challenges, some issues. But then what the action plans that we're going to do to change it, to make things better. So once you find out what people think, you've got to act on that and show that you've taken them into account. Okay. Let others hold you accountable. Okay. It's a two-way street. You'll force yourself to be a better leader if you let people know that they can call you out on things when you're not living up to certain things. I mean, that's okay for my children to call me out. Well, Daddy, you promised this. Or you, uh, everyone can, can, can have some challenges that we need to be accountable for. So I think it's a mutual two-way street. So that's what great leaders would end up doing. So here's another one that's important um, is lead them. Don't assault them. Okay, yeah, you need to set the tone for mutual respect. We know we have our, the way we need to, you know, our, our employee handbook, policies and procedures, and all those things. Those rules are very important. They need to follow those, and all those things are invited, you know, compliances and things like that. But you need to have a psychological contract with them. Well, what that really is, it's an unspoken agreement between an employee or, or yourself and an employee regarding their mutual ex expectation of one another. And so that's when you have dialogue one-on-one -on -one with people. It's not always group meetings. I mean, that's important, too. The employer commits to treating the employee with respect, compassion, trust, Fairness and in return, the employee responds with hard work, loyalty, and commitment. They shouldn't have to feel that they're coerced to do this. And I know it probably doesn't happen as much in child care centers. I'm not sure, but you know, I, I have so many friends and people that are in corporate jobs and jig pick jobs. This does not exist. It's in chaos there. And so, but when we're taking care of our children and these type of jobs, I think it's very important for service industry to have that. But it's important for all jobs. Positive leaders are okay with losing grain of control. I'd rather have people, great people, go out and do the job. Actually, I can focus on other things, aspects of growing the business and doing some other things and outreach and things like that. Or, you know, parents or and some other things that may come up. And this is what I said I wanted to come back to early when I talk about strengths and weaknesses. We all got strengths and weaknesses or areas of development that we want to grow on. And I like to call weaknesses of development or growth area. But focus on strengths more than you focus on, on weaknesses or development here. It enhances success. Letting people do what they do best. Can you imagine if you had a team? That's why they got specialists. You know, I'm not sure if you're in the sports or certain things, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, whatever sport it is, you got people ser serving specialist roles. And obviously you do that in childcare, whether they're working with infants or you know, pre-K or after school or you know, toddlers or whatnot. But are people aligned? in the right things that focus on their strengths. I think someone told me in another class, um, might have been, I don't know if it was the class I did with you guys a couple of months ago. Um, there's one lady, she's pretty artistic and she's creative and organized and all those things. She can't do that all the time, you know, as she's teaching the children. But when she has extra time, she does that for her classroom and she helps does it with other classrooms. It make, makes such a difference. But that's when some people are able to use their creative side, their innovative side, what they really like to do and what they're good at. They can't do it 100% of the time, but when they have that opportunity to still work in that space, that's great. So do you know your people? Do you know their strengths and their weaknesses? There's assessments that can do that you can take on that, either through observance, but also there's, um, uh, again, I get a lot of assessments. You can get all this stuff free online. And so, but do you know your people? You know their, their characteristics, their personality, and what their strengths are. So focus on strengths, not weaknesses, enhance the success. So letting people do what they do best increases their self-confidence. They would like to go to work and do the things that they're able to do, at least engage in a lot. And therefore, their effectiveness, satisfaction, and productivity, okay? I remember one time, I, you know, I like to teach, I like to train. I'm not the best at administrative work, but I have to do it as a part of my job. Now, if I spent 80% of my job doing administrative work, I would hate doing it. But I like to train, you know, I like to coach, mentor, I like to try to get new business. But there's other aspects of my job. But I typically have to focus 75% or 80% in my strength of what I like to do. There's still that other 20% or 25% of my tasks that's mundane that I like to do have to get done. It's still part of the job description. So figure out where your people are and make sure that most of the work that they're doing is focusing on their strength. Some ex here it is right here. Some experts advocate designing jobs so that 75% of an employee's day involve activities that uses his or her best skills. The strength. Do you know what that would mean so much for your child care center and for your children and even probably for growth? So, and you can get people that really want to come with you and really engage and love working and will follow. And so the other 25%, the things that they're trying to do, they will actually follow and lead. 
I mean, and, and follow you as a leader. As a leader, I kind of want to wrap it up with a couple of things. You got to have a plan. Someone said this planning, <coughs> managers and leaders do plan. So don't get me wrong, you do have to plan. But a leader, like when you're talking about the vision, you have to have a strategy. Obviously, we have to have structure and organization. And we have to have the kind of culture. What kind of culture do you have? Do you want? All child care centers are the same. Just because you take care of you know, kids in certain groups or whatnot, or you know, after school or whatever you do, or infants, every child care center is unique and different. You have your own culture. Okay? You can say some of the same things that you do, but you're still a unique child care center. And so when you think about that, you know, um, what's your strategy? We said in the beginning, this is where we're at right now. Tell it like it is. Share with your people. But then how could it be? Where could we be? What could be some of the great things that we can do within our child care center? And I don't know if you received this in some of my previous trainings, but I want to give you an example of a, of a vision, of a child care center vision. So here's an example of a real child care center that I got off the internet or somewhere else. Um, and it's their vision statement. And it's Hilltop Child Care Center, a learning community. That's their tagline. And so are they learning about it? They say a learning community for children. Here's the caveat on it. They say, and adults? Okay, they don't have a child care center where, where adults are teaching, but they say adults because it could be probably for uh, the adults learning and how to, you know, how to teach or you know, parenting skills or whatever. I'm not sure, but they have some actually learning for the adults. So here's what they said. Where children are valued for their ability to do meaningful work, their wonder and curiosity, their perspective, and ability to play. Okay, now that kind of seems okay. That that's, happens with a lot of child care centers, right? But then they take it to another level. When you talked about, you know, outreach and, and things like that and growth, and someone said uh, reputation in the community, then they also take it to another level where they say where families are valued for their bonds. So they're involving families and traditions and respecting that. Their ability to play. Children are not the only ones that can play. Some of the same themes, the play, their commitment to work, because as an adult, you work in your home, your community, and their dreams for their children. So as a leader, they're getting the families involved. But things they did not forget. They did not forget their staff. So as a leader, you can't really forget your employees. That's the glue. Where staff are valued for their vision, their delight in children, their skill, their talent, their heart, their knowledge and commitment to families, but also they can play and have fun too, and their ability to play. So it's all, it's all it's, you see the balance and the equilibrium? And so we're saying really the employees are important. So what are you doing as a leader to inspire them to get them there? And they say we cherish what we learn from each other. So that's just an example. So in essence of time, just maybe a couple of volunteers um, or tell me a little bit about your child care center. What's, what's your vision and how you personalize it? So, um, or think about it, start in writing. Either you have one or you know it, or, or, who, or tell me what represents your child care center. What are you really about? Okay? So I'll give you just a quick three or four minutes, and you can work in the groups or whatnot, and I'll just maybe want one or two volunteers just to tell me about your child care center. Okay? What's your vision? How you personalize it? What are you really all about? And so a leader has to do this. Leader has to, you may think you do it, but when you really, you, we have sessions, they call it, I do this in my business class, let's call it um, a SWAT. What's your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats in your child care center? So every, probably every couple of years, or even every year, people have business planning sessions to see where we're at, or retreats, where we want to go. Leaders do that to think about the future and the vision. So again, spend about three or four minutes to tell me about your child care center. What's your vision? Or personalize it. Where are you trying to go? What are you trying to do? I said it in the beginning, but who are you? What's your vision for your child care center? Uh, but then what you're going to end up doing, you're going to gain alignment every step of the way at every level. But first, you have to know who you are and where you're going. Okay. Then you've got to have the structure, the resources, the organization, the process that they're able to have it. And then the culture. You know, winning together is a big idea. So who are you? Where do you want to go? What kind of culture do you want to have? Do I have maybe one or two volunteers that might kind of really describe your child care center in the sense if you want to give me your vision? vision? Or how do you describe your child care center and kind of maybe even your culture? But just tell me a little bit about your child care center. What makes it great? What, how do you want to describe it? Any volunteers? Yes. Okay, our school has been there 30 years, and 
we want to create a dynamic program using the, Regier the Reggio Emilia based curriculum um, where children learn through play and hands-on activities and we don't offer unique what makes us unique is we offer gymnastics uh, formal dance classes life skills classes in a farm garden and animals um, where children can learn more hands-on than out of a book okay so great great like what's that bring, bring stuff to them well, okay. less field trips everything goes to them so that's kind of like our vision is to continue Continue that and make it more of less. The, I don't know how to explain it. Like you can bring it inside instead yes. of always going outside. We don't just yeah. pile them on a bus. Yeah. And right, right, skating. right, right. And we have decided to. So we expanded and bought a gymnasium and mm. added a farm. Wow. Okay. And make it more than just a school. Right. They okay. Don't wanna, they don't want to go anywhere. All right. All right. <laughs> you know, right. we have had instances where we said you can sign up for a class trip and the children don't want to go. Okay. Okay. Because they don't. I'm afraid they'll miss something. That's right. Good. And so that's how you can that's make right. make it your unique because everyone has a uniqueness. Uh, any one uh, last volunteer? No, we can move on. That, that's fine. So think about that. So this is really homework for you to do because my, my philosophy, when you go to any training, it's not just you can learn some things, but what you do afterwards is the most important part. That makes sense? Okay. So just some additional great uh, leadership ideas. Create meaningful and engaging work for people. Take the pulse of the organization. We talked about that, doing surveys for employee surveys. Always exemplify your words and your actions. Otherwise, you will lose the trust of your people. So, you know, walk the walk, talk the talk. Know your own behavior styles. We kind of summarized that, uh, but we didn't do any assessments, though. And the styles of your colleagues for effective interaction. So go back maybe to the management piece and the leadership piece and see where you fall in and where, how would you rate yourself on more, one more or the other. Not Because sometimes you have to do both. But really, truly, you should be more of a leader, though, okay? Make communication, 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 communication. Make communication with the organization part of your strategy. It should be not happen randomly, okay? Facilitate change by enlisting allies, changing behaviors, and rewarding results, okay? Hire the right people, <laughs> okay, um, is essential. So don't skip on recruiting and training efforts. So again, if you attend my next HR class 101, I'll talk more about that. Show people why their work is meaningful. What impact does it have and what difference does it make? And they will be more committed to have mutual goals and buy-in. Okay. Use positive rather than punitive management techniques to increase productivity and efficiency. Be ready to respond to mistakes, overcome obstacles, and when necessary, eliminate troublesome team members. Because toxic people can have an effect on other people and even your leadership skills. Okay. The strength of a team depends on a variety of skills. So choose colleagues as much as for differences in styles as for similarities. Everybody doesn't need to be the same. We're all different. And diversity is very important, okay? Make devel uh, developing leaders for the future a top priority. So concerned about development. And even if people leave down the road because of growth and opportunity, leaders, good leaders do that. I'll just give you a quick quote on that. Um, when I'm leading a staff and they grow out of being with me, I'm happy about that. If I have encouraged them and motivated them and allowed them to develop, then I'm happy when they move on to a better position. Are you that kind of leader? Okay. There's a couple other quotes. When you choose to take on this leadership responsibility, you have to know that you're willing to go the whole nine miles. The buck stops here uh, and willing to take the blame if something doesn't go right. So be risk takers. We talked about that. Nothing venture, nothing gain, no venture, no vision, no legacy. So this is a kind of another quick summary. Leaders need to have an active spirit, a heart, an attitude, and integrity. We talked about that. Be an innovative. Display a sense of urgency. If you want to make change, make it now. Desire to be the best. Work hard. Be courageous. Uh, persevere. So from the heart, embrace your staff. Put others first. Treat all with respect. Follow the golden rule. Treat people the way you want to be treated. But as I said, to take it a step level, a, le a level higher, treat people the way they want to be treated. So integrity can go without saying. Be honest. Be ethical. Be trustworthy. Um, don't take yourself seriously. Enjoy your work. Also, attitude. You say we want attitude adjustment for people. Sometimes we might be the person that may need the attitude adjustment. Okay, in conclusion, you as a leader make this your mission. To take very good care of your uh, precious young children, our precious young children. Recognize what is appropriate for all children and learning what is particular uh, for each child. To respect the needs and concerns of the family. Okay. 
fostering a partnership with parents in the care of their children. Again, to take staff where they are um, and help them grow in knowledge, skills, always challenging them to become stronger and wiser. To make your community aware of your program's potential as a source of support. To be a voice for the children across the globe, for just, for just as all children are important, more so is each child. And finally, take care of yourself. You know, we, have, we saw the inner circle of leadership. It starts with us first. So take care of yourself. Grow, connect, learn, take risk, and play so that you'll have strength uh, for your mission uh, for, for your days all in the future. So as I close, I want to share this with you. And I got a little torn today because I wanted to take my daughter. She's trying to act and model. She's a freshman. She didn't have anyone to take her to her event today because I was training. And so I said, well, this is daddy's living. I have to make money. But anyway, <laughs> at least this is representing my daughter, Shelby. And I got this from her. I don't know, maybe three or four years ago I was doing a training. And actually, I think I did this in one of these classes. You may have heard this before. And uh, again, about three years ago, a couple of years ago, she had a little book and it was a diary. And it looked like this. And no, Daddy didn't go and read her book and her diary and things like that. But I just noticed it. And I said, wow, this is colorful. It has a lot of good words on here. And I said, I could take it to her for myself, but I could also use it for my training. And so as a leader, this is some words um, as a header of this uh, cover on the, on, on the um, diary. And this is what I'll leave you with as a leader. The word says, be bold. Take a leap of faith. Sing loud. Make a new friend. Shake things up. Take risks. Do something new. Dance wildly. Laugh till you cry. Say something silly. Rock the boat. Write a story. Laugh till it hurts. Say something silly. Do some things crazy. Make a move. Take a new route. Do something new. Seek the unknown. Take a first. Start a step. Something you can do. What can you do today? So hopefully as a leader, I hope some of these things help you. You know, I know it's only an hour and 15 minute class. Leadership classes can last a half a day or a few weeks or whatnot. But hopefully some of these tips will help you. And I appreciate it. Thank you.